Okay, it's five past, so I think we're going to get started. Hopefully more people will join as we go through, but um, good afternoon um, and welcome to the last webinar um, in our series for members, European Society members of 2022. Um, next month in December, we probably will have an online gathering, but it'll be more of a more of a social event. Um, so I'm really pleased to welcome today Maria Genzer from, from the Finnish Meteorological Society, um, who has been our coordinator of expert exchanges, actually not just in the current Europlanet 2024 research infrastructure project that started in 2020, but actually going back many years now, um, supporting this fantastic tool for mobility within the community that enables members of our planetary science community to go in and spend up to a week with um with with people in other institutions um and as maria will see it's a global scheme we have people from all around the world participating doing all kinds of all kinds of um projects um which may be um, at all levels of their career so i'm going to hand over now to maria and we will get going. Thank you. So welcome everyone. And, and, and just, just a little note, my affiliation is Finnish Meteorological Institute. But that's, <laughs> that's fine. So let's get started. I will uh, share my screen and I will uh, show you this really nice web page for the expert exchanges that was just updated a couple of days ago. So just uh, to show you where you can find all the information related to the expert exchanges, you can find this page from Europlanet Society webpage when you go to 2024 RI, Research Infrastructure. And there you choose Networking Activities and Europlanet Expert Exchange Program. So it will take you to this page. So the expert exchange program has been running uh, already for several, several years. It was uh, also running during the last uh, research infrastructure project, and now we continue it. And its purpose is to enable people to travel for uh, networking, for getting more information, share information, do collaboration that so there have been different focuses during different uh, research infrastructure projects and now in the latest one in the in this one we have the following objectives but as you can say as you can see it says might be meaning that uh, they're not that strictly uh, restricted so we are open to different suggestions. So when you propose a, vis a visit, we, we will uh, look at it and we will determine if it's uh, in the scope of this program, in the scope of Europlanet uh, RI. And uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you have to restrict yourself to specifically these bullets. But it will help, of course, because those are the most straightforward. So uh, the main objectives of uh, expert exchange visits are, or might be, for example, to improve infrastructure facilities and services offered to the scientific community. Meaning that if you have a facility and you need to invite an expert to improve that, or you, uh, want to travel to some other facility to learn from them to improve your own facility, for example, so or or laboratory or whatever you have there. So that's like a clear uh, cause for an expert exchange. Also, training on theoretical and practical aspects of the laboratory work or the field work, uh, especially if it's related to the future transnational access applications. Cooperation between academia and industry, always a good thing. We support that. We also support early career professionals, especially to develop skills to use 
these research infrastructure facilities or services or manage them in the future because we have to like raise a new uh, raise new 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 people to to take over those facilities in the future and uh, widening participation from underrepresented states also important because so sometimes it may be financially difficult for someone to travel and that's that's also then a good thing that we can help them so underrepresented states from europe but also around the world so later in the case studies you will you will see uh, which countries have participated in this program so far. Uh, also supporting the inclusion of amateur communities in European planetary science campaigns. So for example, if an amateur would uh, need to travel somewhere to participate in a science campaign, that's something that we could fund. And last but not least, support engagement with wider society through outreach. And uh, for that, we actually, we have a really nice, uh, nice case study, but uh, it will be presented actually in, uh, in the ne next Europlanet magazine. So I will not tell much about it. Well, I can say that it was about a traveling telescope program in Kenya, but uh, the, there will be an article about this trip and what was achieved. And it, it was, uh, funded partially through this expert exchange program. So stay tuned for the next uh, Europlanet magazine. Okay, so these are the objectives. And uh, uh, until the date, I, I think we have uh, in this program, which started in 2020, but sadly it was interrupted as many other things were interrupted by COVID. So we, laid really low for a while but then after most of the restrictions were lifted we were very happy to see that people people uh, returned to their work and i mean working in person with with each other and they started to travel again and we got a lot of very good uh, applications and most of those i think uh, over at least 15 have already been completed and a couple of more are, are still pending. So we have here a few case studies just to show you what are like the possibilities, what has been done before through expert exchange. And, uh, and that perhaps will give you an idea of what you could do. So the first case study is uh, related to improving infrastructure facilities and services. And uh, it's a uh, mass spectrometry of Arctic ice. So actually uh, a researcher from Botswana International University uh, first uh, uh, traveled to North to collect ice samples. And then he took this, these ice samples to Hungary to trial techniques to characterize methane concentration in Arctic ice. So the purpose of this is that the Arctic ice may be a potential analog for studies of icy moons in the solar system. And as you may, may know, the, the icy, moon, uh, icy moon, the next icy moon uh, mission from ESA, JUICE, is due to launch next year. So uh, we will... Uh, study the icy moons more and more. And so this it's important to already uh, develop these techniques, how, how to actually study them. So, so you, you can, I will not read this text, of course, but you can uh, go to the page and, and, and click there is that this uh, like a, a short, short version of the report, what, what happened. And then there is also the link to the full report. So this trip, uh, covered several objectives of expert exchange, not only improvement of facilities and infrastructure, but also training for trans transnational access and widening participation because uh, both Botswana and Hungary are considered underrepresented countries at the moment. So that was uh, one case. Then another 
training on theoretical and practical aspects of the laboratory fieldwork case study is about Raman spectroscopy training and sample analysis. So there was a training course and one of the Natural History Museum researchers uh, visited Italy at the uh, at University of Bologna. And, uh, and there uh, he participated in the, in, in the course and, and made some analysis of the, of the samples and so on. So this is, this is, uh, this is was a good example of uh, what you, you can do with the expert exchange in the uh, scope of laboratory, laboratory work and training for laboratory work. And the ex expert exchange objectives of, for this were not only training for transnational access, but also early career support, which we feel is very important. And uh, then, as another case study, well, we don't have any for cooperation between academia and industry. So if you are, if you are uh, from academia or from a uh, small and medium-sized enterprise, so, so please uh, consider that uh, if you need to travel somewhere for cooperation, this could be something that might be funded by expert exchange. But, then the next bullet support early career professionals to develop skills. Uh, so already the previous case study, oops, sorry. <laughs> already the previous case study here uh, also covered that objective, but then we have a separate case study here for another case. So in this case, uh, there was a, a, a young, young scientist or young engineer from Wigner Research Center of Physics from Hungary, and he visited the Swedish Institute of Space Physics in Kiruna. And the, the main purpose of that visit was to gain a knowledge about how the test facilities used for testing space instrumentation are built and used at RF, and how 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 their thermo vacuum chamber is built and used and so on so, and also about the quality system how how to run the tests according to the quality rules that ESA requires from the spacecraft uh, instruments and so on so that was also something very much in the scope of this program so there was a like a, a young young expert young uh, or I mean early career, early career expert who traveled quite far, quite far north to another uh, institute to gain knowledge that uh, his institute did not have at that moment. And then uh, for widening participation, even though already several of these case studies have already also been about widening participation from underrepresented states, but there is another case study specifically for that. So that was collaboration between Australia and Botswana. And here, as you can see, even if Europlanet implies Europe, we do not uh, restrict ourselves only to Europe, but we want to widen participation to all the world and we want to make possible uh, cooperation between different countries, even if they are on the opposite sides of the globe. So this one is a particularly good uh, example of that because uh, Australian scientists from the University of Newcastle traveled to Botswana and, and there they uh, they got training for the academic and research staff, or I mean, they provided training for the academic and research staff in how to select, collect, preserve, and analyze specimens of astrobiological and microbiological interest. And so that's, that's also one, one very good example of what can be done. So the objectives covered were improvement of facilities and infrastructure, 
but and training for transnational access and also early career support. And full reports again are given in the links, so you can read those if you are interested. So uh, for the amateur communities support in European planetary science campaigns. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have any case studies for that yet. And then this, uh, as, as I said earlier, there will be a feature in your plant magazine about the uh, outreach, a very, very nice uh, out outreach activity that was done in Kenya. And uh, yeah, so read all about it. <laughs> um, so how to organize an expert exchange? Oh, actually, here, I think some moments ago, we had a very nice map where uh, you could see all the countries that are uh, until now participated in, in these uh, expert exchanges. But for some reason, we cannot see it now, but maybe maybe later. So if you come back to this page later, you can, you can see the map. So how to organize an expert exchange? So uh, those were examples of what has been done before. And now you have the opportunity to, uh, er, to uh, participate in this program yourselves. So uh, what does it need? It needs that you need to uh, identify that there's a need for a visit somewhere. It could be also a virtual visit. So we introduced these virtual visits in 2020 when COVID was all around and we thought that we need to we need to come up with something of how we can uh, enable people to collaborate with other laboratories without actually traveling there so there is a possibility also to arrange a virtual expert exchange of course it's not as straightforward as an actual physical expert exchange but that is also possible still, even if uh, most of the COVID restrictions have been lifted. So when there's a need identified for a visit, uh, the applicant should ask the host facility or institute. Uh, well, first you have to agree on the terms, what are you going to do and when and so on. And then uh, the host needs to write an invitation letter. And uh, that invitation letter together with other information needs to be uploaded uh, through this application form that we have here. So I will just click it now. So, uh, so there we just briefly go through uh, what is asked for in this application format. So it's just, just like name, name and institution and so on, ba basic information career stage, that's, a, that's an important one, because if you are an early career uh, expert or scientist, then you, that's also, that's always a plus. And then, uh, so it's applicant details, host details, and here the letter of invitation needs to be uploaded at this point. And short sum summary of the purpose of the visit. So you tell us, what you are planning to do and achieve during this visit. And that's, that will be the basis of consideration for us. And then uh, duration, uh, up to one week. So this means that, actually, this means that maximum seven days visits can be reimbursed. It doesn't mean that you have to leave after seven days. It's just that, uh, we can reimburse only seven, seven days of uh, accommodation and living expenses. But if uh, you need a longer visit and it's uh, identified in, the, in this application, that's fine. It's just that you have to find uh, other means to pay for that. So there's duration and there's timing. Then budget. Uh, so the... There have been usually some questions about what can be reimbursed or refunded. And uh, basically, we refund uh, 
accommodation for maximum seven days and then tickets for the plane or the or the train or where, wherever you're going depending on that but it's like non-local transportation so that that's the point so we do not separately reimburse local transportation uh, and car rental might be reimbursed but that's uh, needs to be authorized uh, beforehand so if you are traveling somewhere where you where it's necessary to actually rent a car to be able to to achieve your whatever you're doing so you you have to state it already in your application and tell us why so so that can be authorized um taxi well on basically only if public transportation is not available or if you uh, arrive somewhere very late or you have to leave like very early in the morning, for example, or of course there may, may be other cases also where uh, public transportation is not available or it's not usable for some other reason. So that's, that's uh, also possible, but it's not like automatically accepted. Uh, conference registrations and so on. So, so that, these are basically the basic costs that will be reimbursed. And then in addition to that, we will pay per diem for that covers the like living costs, except for accommodation uh, in wherever country you are. And they are paid according to Finnish rules, let's say <laughs> Finnish tax, tax rules. So there are for each country there are there's a certain uh, amount per day that can be paid for subsistence and that will be automatically paid uh, to you for the duration of your visit but for maximum seven days. So you don't have to uh, gather any receipts for meals or anything like that. Uh, those per diems you will get automatically, and the they differ from country to country actually a lot and uh yeah uh well but usually they are enough to cover your meals and and whatever else you might need and the local transport is something that is supposed to be covered with them so here you give the total estimated budget accommodation travel an estimated number of per diems, those will be calculated automatically then by our administration software. And if you are some other, if you have some other costs that you think uh, should be reimbursed, you can also apply for them here. So when you get uh, when you get your uh, answer about whether you, you, your application has been accepted, uh, we always tell. If, uh, if you are accepted, but some of the costs that you have applied for cannot be accepted. So we always tell that in advance, it will not come as a surprise for you. So we, we will uh, tell that and also remind everybody that uh, the costs can only be reimbursed after the travel has been completed and you have submitted your report and submitted all the necessary uh, invoices or, or receipts that you have. So on, only then uh, we can make the reimbursement. So, so in practice, you have to pay for, the, for everything first yourself and then, then only get the reimbursement. Okay, and there's also a detailed description of the purpose of your, of your visit and so on. And then just click submit, and there it goes. So at the moment, we have a call open. Oh, the map has come back. We'll see that soon. So we have a call open now, and it will uh, close in the end of December. So uh, in, in January, uh, after, after the holidays, we will uh, process all the applications that have, be, have been submitted before the end of December. 
and then uh, the visits through this call should take place between the 1st of February and 21st of July. Uh, 1st of February because uh, we need some time to process the applications to be able to give you the answers. So do not plan for the visit before you have actually uh, received our reply. Yes. So, oops, here's the map that I was talking about. So as you can see, we have had participants already from Northern America, Southern America and Africa, and then of course, Europe. Uh, all the reports that, well, not all the reports, but many of the reports <laughs> we have <laughs> received so far can also be found here. So if you're interested, please, click on them and, uh, and read, read the reports. And yeah, there's a article in Europlan magazine. Yes, that's it. So uh, I can also show you the link of the reimburse post visit form. So after you have completed your visit, after it has been accepted and you have completed it, you have to fill out this, uh, post visit form where basically you uh, give details of your trip and then uh, banking information that's a that's an important thing so banking information is given here and then there is a separate separate form that you need to fill and and attach all your receipts but that's like yeah the uh, instructions are on the website and also if you if you will be, uh, if your application will be accepted, uh, you can always ask what to do, and we will be happy to help you. And uh, the report, you, it's very important to write a report about two pages in English, and because we can only approve visits where report has been submitted. So you upload your report, you upload your reimbursement form with all the receipts and then you submit. So the, technically this is not that difficult. So uh, as I said, now we have a call open until the end of December. And then based on how many applications we will receive by that time, and based on the budget that we have left, we will for sure open other calls too next year. So uh, it might come quite soon after the first one, or maybe there will be a, a little pause. Uh, but anyway, you will be able to apply also after the 31st of December, and you will be able to travel also later than the 31st of July. Uh, I think the, late, the last call will be issued uh some sometime in the end really in the in the end of 23 and the travel will be possible until march or perhaps even april 24 but after that we have to stop and that also assuming that we have budget left <laughs> but but yes so so you can if you are interested in arranging arranging such a visit you can plan it basically for any time in 2023 and uh, even in the start of 24. And then you will just have to look for the calls and, and, and choose a call with a suitable deadline and a suitable visit uh, time period. Yes. So I think this is about everything I was going to say. And now I don't know if we have uh, any questions. Thank you so much, Maria. That was that was really great overview of the um, of the program. And um, we will be posting the recording of this and probably clipping out sections as well as train training material. So if you do want to apply for an expert exchange visit, as uh, Maria says, you've got a got a year to do it. Um, and hopefully you've seen today that there's all kinds of really exciting things that you can you can do with that. Now, Shushmita uh, has has a question. Uh, 
Shush, you should be able to talk. Oh no, that, that that was asking when when the last call will be. Um, so we've 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 already already answered that. Um, yeah, the end of twenty twenty three. We've got uh, the Europe Planet project runs until July twenty twenty four. So we we have a bit of time in twenty twenty four, but we do need to make sure that everything is done and refunded um, before the um, before the project finishes. Um, does anybody have any other questions, or, or Shush, do you have other questions? Well, I think you've I think you've been through everything. I think you've been very, very thorough. Um, I would say as well that there has already been an article in um in the Europlanet magazine in in the last issue or the one before, um, which is why there's a picture of the dinosaur um at the Natural History Museum on the on the on the front cover um because um actually uh, maria mentioned earlier at the beginning that um there was a visit to bologna and between the natural history museum and somebody in orleans and so the three visits all kind of work together and there's 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 a report in that written by maria um and and also uh featuring a a a, 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 a um a, a a short um article from the from one of the participants an early career researcher um about his about his experiences um in doing that so do have a look at that um do keep an eye out for the next issue of the of the Europlanet magazine um and please do please do apply for expert exchanges we 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 still have funding available we do still have uh, um a plenty of time so so have a think and and see what you can do and and more to the point also please do um please do publicize this please do let people within your within your networks within your institutions know that the program is available um and if you, they're talking to you about ideas about things that they would like to do let them know that this could be an opportunity to 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 fund them um so maria is there anything you want to add no i think everything was covered so uh i'm not sure actually i will stop sharing now i think everything was more more or less covered that uh, more or less and and also if you have any questions you can send email to me or my colleague Harry Halka. Our uh, email addresses are on the web page. And uh, yeah, so I don't think about what kind of uh, visits you could do that would benefit you and the European community in general, and please apply. Brilliant. Well, thank you ever so much, Maria. Um, just to let you know, um, I mentioned we, we, we'll, we'll try and do some sort of social thing before Christmas, um, maybe to tie in with the announcement of the Inspired by Other Worlds contest winners. Um, but we also have some webinars, topics for webinars that are lined up for 2023. Um, I'm not quite sure the dates yet, but there's going to be one on um, there's going to be one about JWST given by Lee Fletcher. Um, who's one of our board members who's um, involved in the science team, um, I think related to gas giants and um, ice giants um, are doing observations with JWST. We've got one on um, on transnational access activities. So we've just had the third call and again, amazing case studies of things that people have done um, with Europlanet funding um, and so hopefully some inspiring stories that are coming out of that. And then finally, we'll have one on geological mapping as well. The GMAP Winter School is coming up in um, the end of January, beginning of February. Um, so if you are a geological mapper, then please do please do join that um, or, or share with your share with your networks again. So otherwise, thank you very much for joining us today. And thank you, Maria, particularly and um, for for giving us the overview and thank you Callum for setting everything up and we look forward to next time and um, Angelica thanks thanks you Maria for an excellent presentation so thank you for thank your you. thank you
Okay, thanks everybody.